Okay, so this is uh, part one recording of today's live session. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't have the chance to record it and uh, this is now being added. So today we're going to talk about uh, additive manufacturing. It will be a brief introduction. We'll start with a recap of the asynchronous material that has been uploaded on the Blackboard page. And then we'll go and talk about uh, particular uh, additive manufacturing processes like fuse deposition modeling, sterile lithography, ink jets, and selective laser sintering. We'll be looking at some advantages and limitations of these uh, uh, processes and some of their applications in an industrial uh, context. So I've left you with a question in the previous uh, uh, lecture. And the question was basically, uh, what challenges could you find in manufacturing this cup uh, using, for example, additive manufacturing or CNC machining? And if you decided to actually go with more conventional manufacturing like CNC, one of the problems would be to actually generate this cavity that could be actually too deep uh, for uh, the cutting tool that would probably clash with the walls of the cup. The other problem could be this undercut here that normally cannot be performed without um, a machine that have more uh, than or at least five uh, axes. Also uh, the basis could be a challenge uh, because this normally is attached to the building platform and if you wanted to machine the basis you would have to turn the cup around and machine it in two uh, different uh, stages. And also sharp internal features cannot be machined without a tool radius. And this can be also uh, quite challenging with uh, conventional manufacturing. So in this particular case, because of the geometry of this uh, cup, additive manufacturing and completely disregarding any economic uh, uh, aspects, you, uh, you would be better suited with additive manufacturing that allows to create these complex geometries in a layer by <clears throat> layer fashion. In terms of the material that was covered in the asynchronous session, uh, we basically uh, set the definition for additive manufacturing according to ASTM F42 and what this uh, international committee uh, stated is that additive manufacturing is a process of joining materials to make three-dimensional objects starting with a digital model uh, and then physically replicating that model in a layer-by-layer -layer fashion which is completely different from the more conventional sub subtractive methods where you start with a block of material and then you remove until you obtain your final part. Also and very often these additive manufacturing processes are classified as bi biomimetic approaches. And they are classified as such because in many ways they replicate many of the processes that we can find in nature, like for, for example the deposition of soils or even uh, the growth and the shape of trees in nature. So that similarity with uh, processes that we find in nature uh, awards them this uh, biomimetic classification, which brings obviously many advantages as we will see. Independently of the process that you choose, either an extrusion base or a vat photopolymerization, the flow chart information or the stages that you have to go through from the design of the model until you get the physical replication of that model with a 3D printer are uh, common to all of them. So you normally start by designing your uh, object using, for example, SOLIDWORKS. After that, you create a triangularized surface model, uh, which is also called an STL file. After that, using a slicing software, you slice your model into layers of homogeneous thickness. And then this information together with uh, numerical coordinates are sent to the 3D printer that will then follow those coordinates to replicate exactly uh, each one of these layers and to stack them one upon the other to create the physical object. 
We've also briefly mentioned about the classification of these processes according to the ASM42. There are different processes in terms of additive manufacturing, and we're only going to cover some of them. We're going to cover material extrusion, binder jetting, vertical polymerization, and powder bed fusion, and mainly because these are the most common processes used in our industries. So material uh, extrusion normally uses uh, thermoplastic materials, materials that can be melted and then extruded through a nozzle or an orifice into a building platform. They are then solidified and similar to uh, all of the other processes, layers are deposited one on top of the other until you obtain a three-dimensional object. By the jetting is uh, quite different from material extrusion and in this case what we have is uh, the material in the form of a powder that is dispensed in the building platform and then the printing head is going to selectively dispense uh, a liquid adhesive uh, material to bind these powder particles together and to form your layers. And in this case, the loose powder can be used to support the building of your uh, component that may have hanging structures that need those support materials. Obviously, and as we'll see, one of the advantages is actually the use or the possibility of using this loose powder as a support environment for the part that is being built, but also the ability to recycle that material and to reuse it again to build other parts. Vet photopolymerization is also a, a very common uh, process in terms of additive manufacturing in our industries. And in this case, what we use is a liquid photopolymer that we then transform into a solid uh, by the action or through the action of light that can be in the form of UV light, infrared light or combination of both. And then finally powder bed, def the, the powder bed fusion uh, which comprises both selective laser sintering and selective uh, laser melting. And in this case we use high thermal power energy to selectively fuse regions of a powder material that can be a metal or it can be a polymer and this is actually a very important technological process for both the automotive and aerospace industry nowadays as well as for uh, the medical okay so in terms of material extrusion uh, also commonly known as fused deposition modeling this is the common setup of the most uh, commercially or widely available uh, systems uh, you normally have uh, the material in the form of a filament. This is pushed into um, a print head through the action of these uh, rollers. Once the material, the solid material, enters this print head, is heated, is melted, and then forced through the nozzle into the building platform, where it will solidify. And once solidified, another layer will be deposited on top of the previous one. There are some variations in terms of the systems and those variations can be, for example, the movement or the displacement of the building platform. Some systems only have Z of displacement, whilst the X and Y are uh, basically in the print head or the other way around. So the building platform can have displacements in X and Y, whilst the vertical movement is in the uh, print head. There are some advantages, general advantages about this system. One is the, 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 the simplicity in terms of operation. It's quite easy to operate these systems. The wide range of materials from polymeric materials to composite materials. Uh, and this gives you a great flexibility in terms of the materials they can use to produce a wide range of products with different functionalities. And also the low cost of these systems when compared to for example, selective laser sintering or that photopolymerization. In terms of limitations, uh, the high processing temperatures can be somehow limiting, uh, especially when we look into medical applications. Uh, there's always a need that you are uh, required to uh, fabricate a filament prior uh, to the printing process. Uh, this adds additional time and cost to the entire process and the need for support structures in case you have overhanging structures that need to be supported. And again, this adds extra costs and extra time 
for uh, the fabrication process. In terms of what, uh, that photopolymerization, also commonly known as stereolithography, in this case the process is quite different. We have a vat where we have a liquid photopolymer and in order to create our objects we're going to use a laser that can be a UV laser or an infrared or a combination of both and this laser will be directed into our building platform through the action of this scanning system, these mirrors and when the laser irradiates the liquid photopolymer it will trigger a chemical reaction that will allow the transformation of that liquid material into a solid according to the geometry of your part. Once the first layer is built the platform uh, lowers inside this liquid uh, photopolymer uh, bath and then this recodes system will deposit another layer on top of the previous one, an homogeneous one, and the process restarts again until you obtain a final uh, part. At the end there will be a post-processing uh, stage where you need to remove all the support structures in case you have them or you need to clean the parts or reinforce the parts. And these systems are particularly advantages when you, you want to build parts with a very good resolution and accuracy. And this system provides a higher dimensional accuracy when compared to many of the other systems like uh, fuse deposition modeling, binder jetting, or even uh, powder bed fusion systems. And because you can use uh, support structures and because of the resolution, you can build very complex and accurate geometries. Some of the limitations are uh, basically related with a limited range of materials, so they need to be photopolymers, they need to be able to transform from liquid to solid through the action of light, and the post-curing uh, stages that are required to obtain a final uh, part. Also, uh, binder jetting, a very common uh, process in terms of our uh, industry, especially for uh, the design and manufacturing of surgical uh, models, for example. <coughs> How this system works? Normally you have a material reservoir where you have your material in the form of a powder and you have a building chamber where you have your building platform that has a vertical displacement. In order to build the first layer, the roller will dispense the material on top of the building platform and then this printing head will dispense the liquid, uh, adhesive liquid, according to the geometry of your parts, promoting the addition, the addition of uh, the powder particles uh, together. Once the first layer is built, the platform lowers according to the slice thickness of the parts a new layer is deposited through the action of the roller and again the print head will come down and deposit uh, the liquid adhesive to promote the adhesion of the particles. And the process is repeated until you obtain your final part. Importantly, all the loose powder that is surrounding the parts can be used as a support material but also needs to be removed at the end through a post-processing stage. Some of this material can be recycled and reused, uh, but as we will see when we get to lecture six, uh, not all of the material can be uh, recycled. And this has an additional cost in terms of the process. In terms of the advantages, it's the high processing speed, mainly because we can use multiple printing heads that will increase significantly the speed and reduce the building time of our parts. And from a sustainable point of view is quite advantageous because we can use uh, adhesive systems such as water that has a very low uh, environmental impact and also cost. In terms of the limitations, obviously because of the materials that we use that are normally plasters, waxes, uh, the mechanical properties are lower when compared to other systems that use uh, much more uh, strong materials like metals in powder bed fusion. You can also uh, end up with trapped powder materials if you're building, for example, uh, hollow structures like a sphere that need to be removed in a post-processing stage. And uh, obviously the use of powder materials can be 
uh, actually a limitation because of all um, the costs and additional steps that are required to obtain a final part. Finally, uh, the powder bed fusion. This is uh, a critical uh, and probably one of the key uh, additive manufacturing sy uh, systems for our automotive and uh, aerospace industry and mainly because it allows us to build parts using metals that have a very good mechanical performance. In this case what we have is a material reservoir where we have uh, the powder either polymeric or metal in the form of a powder. Uh, we also have a chamber where we can collect the excess of material and in order to build the first layer, uh, the roller will dispense the right amount of material into the building platform. The laser uh, that is normally a very high thermal energy laser is then uh, used to scan the surface of the material, the powder material, uh, selectively sintering that material or melting the particles together forming these uh, constructs. Once the first layer is built and similar to the other processes, the platform lowers, another layer is deposited, the excess material is removed and collected, the roller retracts and the process starts again and is repeated until you obtain the parts with the dimensions that you want. Similar to binder jetting, all the loose powder can be used to support um, overhanging structures uh, and this is uh, one of the advantages of this system. Uh, there are differences when you use polymer materials or metal materials, but we will talk about that uh, in uh, later uh, lectures. Uh, the other important thing is that the material, and similar to binder jetting, can also be recycled and reused, uh, reducing the overall costs of the system and main, uh, making it much more sustainable compared to other systems where the support materials cannot be uh, recycled. So in terms of advantages, the high mechanical resistance of the, uh, of the components that you produce, mainly because of the intrinsic high mechanical properties of the materials like metals and uh, polymers, the diversity of materials, so from polymers to metals, ceramics, composites can be used to create parts, and in some cases, you don't need to create support structures because the loose powder can be used as uh, support um, structures for the building of your uh, component. Obviously, because of the high power that is uh, used to melt or to sinter the particles together, this requires very high energy that will increase the costs, overall costs of the system. Uh, because you are melting and solidifying um, a specific material, this uh, change in terms of the state of the material will create obviously some shrinkage that can have a negative impact on the dimensions and the geometry of your parts that needs to be controlled. And obviously, like any surface, any sorry, any powder-based system, the surface finish is always problematic and it requires a post-processing to improve the surface finishing of your parts to meet the requirements of your uh, customers. So uh, this is where we've stopped and um, you can then follow the second part of uh, the lecture in the other uh, video recording. Thank you.